Oh, right. <laughs> I'm on Investopedia. Um, I just saw this uh, this chart and I thought it was awesome because it, it looks very similar to our chart. Uh, we got this kind of reversal on our chart. And uh, this is just like a generic example of what an island top reversal looks like, the technical analysis formation. Um, so I wanted to, to take a look at this. This is the the super, super bearish double island top, uh, which is pretty rare. Um, but this this is like our candle that we're getting right now to open right here. Um, so this is, this is one potential formation that could happen here uh, to the bearish side. I just did the Dominion Energy video and I looked a lot at the bullish uh, the bullish outlook for this morning, but I wanted to kind of draw my my bearish cases here. Um, and this is one important thing in the bearish case for these island top reversals is you generally see increased volume through the island top like all the way up and through it down. That whole reversal point is usually increased wall and then it falls off after. Um, yeah, so yeah, increased wall all the way through. And then this is a double, the M, the M for murder, the M for Mugatu. Um, so yeah, a double M island top is, that's probably the most bearish formation ever. Um, if that, if that happened, um, yeah, that, that would be pretty bearish. Let me jump over to the chart though, and uh, let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, on mmtgear.com, I just got this Mount Printmore shirt up that has the Fed chairman on it. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, that's a funny one. And uh, please like and subscribe. I'm getting close to the, the thousand uh, subs here. Uh, even if you don't like my channel, just sub, just sub for long enough for me to <laughs> apply for monetization, and then, uh, and then you can unsub. Uh, but let's take a look. Uh, as you can see here, this chart looks very, very similar, uh, similar to the example of the, the double island top. Um, that's just like the generic example on Investopedia. But we also have this super sticky two year long uh, trend line from the bottom of the 2018 crash. I call this the Volmageddon trend line. And so uh, just sort of generically an island top would, would gap up like this and then gap back down like this. So that is kind of the island top shape here, but, um, but if we are going to break to the upside, I think a stickier and more dramatic bear target is to go up and test this trend line again and get a proper uh, a proper reversal off of it. And so probably, I think probably if it's a double island top, it would probably do that kind of in this zone. And this area would probably be more likely to get a parabolic reversal top. Um, so it's almost the same. It's almost the same pattern, uh, where you just get up here, and then you know the island top would grind over and then pop down, and the parabolic reversal would probably do something like that. Like those are the kind of bearish uh, charts that I'm looking at in the case that we do that we do close above this zone today. I mean now we've already. Well, it's not trading hours yet, so we haven't really broken out of it yet. I mean, if it opens and just rains back down into here on open, then then we're not then we're not out of the boring zone yet. But it looks like we're going to pop out of the boring zone, and we're going to get we're going to get the big test, the big test to see if we get a massive bear market reversal, or if we can get out into an actual bull market up here, and. This week should be super, super interesting, um, especially after the last couple weeks of this nonsense here. And then, yeah, on the Fed balance sheet stuff, um, the Fed balance sheet is still down. The Treasury account is still up. So the Fed has uh, not only stopped money printing for almost an entire month now, uh, they're actually taking money back out of the repo market. So the balance sheets have been negative. And then the Treasury General account is still going up, but it's not quite parabolic anymore. It's kind of uh, kind of just leveling off a little bit. 
Uh, but those are two huge things to watch. Like if that Treasury General account starts shooting down, that's a ton of helicopter money. That's inflationary into the economy. And if the Fed balance sheet starts shooting up, that is, you know, bank balance sheet money uh, that tends to flow into assets. But but really, it's just the infotech sector that's still doing stock buybacks. Um, so that so that the stock buyback way that you know Fed balance sheet money has been getting into the stock market is still happening, but it's only happening in the infotech sector. So if you take a look at the queues, and I don't I don't know if these are getting trading. Oh, are we getting? Yeah, we're getting uh, we're getting pre market stuff on the queues. Um, so they're they're uh, looking to open at all time highs, and so this this uh, crazy run on on the you know the infotech industrial and the queues and like the Nasdaq, this has had stock buybacks. So like this crash in the market stopped the stock buybacks on almost every other sector, um, and then they just uh, they just went and told the banks the little tiny bit of stock buybacks they were doing, they can't do anymore. Um, so even those have stopped now, but the queues are still doing stock buybacks and now they've added Apple and Microsoft to the bond buying sheet, which makes no sense because they have huge cash piles and have absolutely no reason to sell bonds to the Fed, but I, I guess they might do it, just why not? Um, <laughs> so they can sell bonds to the Fed and raise unnecessary extra cash and do stock buybacks with it. And so that I think might be a method the Fed is using to kind of prop the market through the stock buybacks through the uh, infotech sector. And so that's the thing I've been watching is uh, the infotech sector has been, well, the Fed liquidity froze up back here. And the like the financials and the small caps and things like that have been going down since then. Uh, but the Industrials are still going up. And so when these get separated huge, that is uh, usually not good for the whole market. Um, but that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of liquidity and how it's flowing into the market. Uh, there's very little liquidity right now, but there is still a little bit of bond buying and there's still buybacks in this sector, just this sector. And so that's the tiny bit of liquidity. And so, yeah, just as like a generic long, like this to me is a really, just a really bad trading setup for where to go long. Like as far as, as far as long trades go, I mean, yeah, like if the S&P, if the S&P closes and looks like it might make a move, you could get, and this is not investment advice, but this area in here, I mean, you got the island top kind of zone here. You've got the long-term trend line here. Like this is just a bunch of nonsense on the long side. And on the short side, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where to target it. Like it could do all kinds of crazy stuff in here, but like if it gets up here, around this trend line, that's sort of the last place to take a short. And if it does get up here, uh, this is a trend line that nobody really knows about, I don't think. Uh, it's a bull market support line that I've been following back uh, back since the crash. So uh, when we had that initial drawdown, this is where we, we crashed under and back tested this line before. And so that supported the market for two years. We broke under, we back tested, we swung out here, we rejected off of it. Um, so that's still a bearish setup. And this is the last spot. Like if it double tests this line and reverses off of it, um, that's a that's sort of the last stand for the bears there before it gets out into crazy territory. Um, so yeah, this week I'll be watching watching the liquidity, but we won't see new balance sheet numbers until Thursday after market. Um, but I want to see if money is flowing into these sectors. Do they start rotating in? Um, do we get bullish movement? And do we get rotation into other sectors or does it keep separating farther? Um, yeah, so today it's probably hard to get a good trading setup like for today. 
but today should should kind of determine whether you know whether we close up here and it looks like a bullish kind of week or if we close down here and get kind of a bearish setup for the week um, but the bears need to get straight down here like quick the longer it stays up here the more likely it is uh, to go up like just if we call if we close up here if we close up here outside of this zone uh, that'll be that'll be bullish momentum and bullish technicals and that should be pretty bullish and then yeah as far as like an island top like it could it could kind of stall out higher or it could you know do a bearish reversal here or it could break out and uh, actually get into actual bull market territory up here so those are kind of the the most likely looks right now um based on this opening but we haven't we haven't seen the cash yet so i mean it still could kind of start down um but it looks like it looks like it wants to start up and those are those are kind of the zones and oh, what are we getting oh we're getting action on some stuff here okay yeah let's take a look at these so the the small caps are well i guess kind of gapping up like a little baby gap up um so that is maybe indicate indicating a bit of rotation into the small caps and financials are opening up a little bit but they're still they're still way down although you could probably draw a tighter line kind of here that shows that it's trying to kind of break up but I mean, the financials are below the averages and they never uh, recovered from that peak. So I think this is an important one to watch, like the financials versus the versus the kind of infotech sector, which has just been absolutely crazy. And yeah, gap up to all time highs there. And gold is trying to trying to get up higher. So this gold setup, um, this is kind of an annoying spot for gold to start doing a, a, a bullish technical setup because this this technical setup for trading gold long happened right when the liquidity was down, and I just I just don't like the idea of going long on you know, on gold or silver or something like that while liquidity is tight. Like those are those are assets you want to do and inflation is going to run hot. Not when bonds are about to trade negative and they're not they're not printing any money. And silver is trying to trying to get back up too. Silver's been trading in this range for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. It's annoying like the just to get a bunch of mixed signals where um, you know where a technical a technical setup is fighting against kind of the liquidity is kind of frustrating. And then oil, what's oil doing? And this is the USO, not like the the actual oil price. Um, just kind of grinding out. Yeah, so oil is kind of at an oversupply again, and the demand on oil is really low right now, much lower than expected. And so that should potentially drive oil prices down a little bit, but it hasn't it hasn't done it. Uh, so oil is just kind of yeah, in a weird spot. Are we getting volatility? Oh yeah, volatility is pushing down even further. So it closed the I closed the little gap here and now it has it's broken down almost to the lows almost to the lows uh, before the big the big reversal peak that we had so the volatility is an interesting one to watch um, if we get up to those top trend lines then volatility should be down it should be back down to these kind of lows and then on the on the put spread, let's see, the put calls. 
Yeah, so like the put call ratios when we got to that peak area uh, went to like a historically high put to call ratio, but it was also a record number of calls placed. Um, it was like four times the most call options ever placed on that one peak. And so you can see it's trended. It's trended a little more bearish and now people are shorting now. So that's an interesting thing to see. So yeah, so the market is opening up and people are shorting the crap out of it right now. And so yeah, so people aren't really buying it. They're not buying the move up, which probably <laughs> that's probably more bullish on the actual chart <laughs> because um because where you get a real reversal is where the where you're not getting uh, bearish bets like it's it's when like everyone goes full bullish that you actually get the reversal on the chart usually um so people are trying to short this this will be interesting transports sometimes this leads and so the transports are kind of working their way up too. So it looks like we might be getting some sector rotation, which would be a little more bullish uh, right now. Oh, what's Tesla doing? Oh, it's like gapping up to even crazier numbers. Tesla's double, double gap. Oh my goodness. Tesla's just absolutely insane. Uh, this stock, this stock just is just crazy. Like the fundamentals and the technicals on this thing are just so far opposite. It's just absolutely nutty. So, I mean, th this is just just nuts parabolic. Like, it's just crazy. Look at that thing. It seems like that's got to come down, but I mean, we had this big we had this big move here that just kind of. Just kind of wobbled its way out. But I can't imagine how uh, like how long Tesla can go parabolic for before it gets like a big correction. But I don't know. I mean, if it'll correct down into a flag like or if it'll correct down a lot harder than that. But this looks very suspect. A super parabolic, insane, double gapping. Crazy. Um, yeah, but the Tesla, like uh, the Tesla shorts, as far as like put options and stuff go, like that, they're uh, they're expensive. The you know, as far as like hedging or whatever goes, like the insurance premiums for buying Tesla hedges is pretty expensive. So unless you go like way out of the money and do a super crazy kind of short, like it's going to be really uh, expensive and a really bad deal on the time premium, and so. Um, yeah, like shorting the height. I mean, you know, this is just like a gamble on when, when the hype is kind of going to break and how far it'll break down. Um, but I would imagine this thing will correct somewhat, at least like halfway down this parabola soon. <laughs> Tesla's nuts. Uh, all right, yeah, so this uh, not investment advice, and please hit the subs and help me get to a 1,000. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out and watching some <laughs> some the craziest stock market anyone has ever seen. It's crazy, and yeah, probably by the end of this week, we'll kind of know what this is because we've just been chopping around in the middle of nowhere land for a while, for a couple weeks, and um we should kind of get a, a setup that has more of a longer term outlook soon maybe maybe two weeks or so um yeah so thanks for watching and happy trading